corner of the um, channel three feed. And so you can see there that it still has the um, shape of an underwater volcano. It doesn't look <laughs> like it was ever subaerial. Oh, seriously. Um, uh, and so probably doesn't have coral rubble and things on the top. We were almost at the presumed summit uh, of where we were diving um, on that seamount. Uh, but right now we're coming back down to some deeper depths uh, as we're waiting for the ship to work out some issues. Um, so we're coming back down over some of the area we just previously came up. For those who have been following the dive for a while, you know that we were kind of in this gently sloped, sedimented area. So close. And um, just below this, it was much more of a steep topography, a lot more exposed basalts, and a ton of um, coral and sponge diversity. So it'll be interesting to see what that top little part looks like. Yeah, thanks. It's really nice contrast there between the Don Quixote Seamount that we've done now three dives on and this smaller seamount. Yes. You can actually, if you're looking really closely on that channel three, you can see those white lines which mark the ascents and descents of our dives in the last week. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you can see that we did one dive on the northern part. So this is kind of a uh, looking from the south to the north uh, view. And so you can see there was one dive on the northern flank of Don Quixote. There were two dives on the northwestern flank. And now we're on the seamount to the southwest. Thanks, and Bob. I believe tomorrow's dive will be on Tamana Seamount, which is a little bit to our southeast. Yeah, that dive is scheduled to launch around 8 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. More blue water uh, <laughs> for this shift. Uh, yeah. And all of these seamounts are well within the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument. And that's part of the um, focus of this expedition is to understand where and how dense animals are living on these seamounts. Um, so this is the first time anyone's ever seen this seamount with uh, modern eyes, modern imagery, maybe ever. So. All new exploration here. In addition to seeing some maybe first sightings of different species, we also got our first sediment core of the expedition on this dive. Congratulations. Yeah. What was, was the, the trick? I don't know. It was uh, it was in an area that was like a little bowl, and there was a little patch of sediment surrounding a bunch of manganese nodules. And it, it was the ticket. Exciting. I did swap the yellow and red push cores this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all thanks to Jake. I will take partial credit. Yeah, I think <laughs> you should take all the credit. <laughs> I've, I've had a good run of luck these last few days. <laughs> I don't know. You got stuck with blue water two watches in a row. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, so even though we're in this sedimented area, we can still see that there's some um, corals on some of these rocks. Not in super high density, but they're there. Definitely picking the largest boulders. Yeah, and we can also see that the view in Herc's cam, there's just a ton of particulate matter in the water um, in this area. Let's see, our heading is currently to the southeast. Kind of looks like the uh, flow of the particles is coming from our left to towards us. So coming from the south, which makes uh, actually coming from the east-ish. <laughs> um, in the area where the really high density corals were seen before, I think it was coming from the south.
Yeah, I do see your request to look at the top ridge of that later mouse. But we are kind of focusing on some movement right now, and we will have lots of time during blue water to maybe circle back around to that viewing again. Oh, looks like Rennie is bringing it up. Any, any look on the chat over there? Nope. I'm <laughs> still, okay. still struggling on both these computers. I'm gonna, can I take control of that computer? Please. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do over here. Do I need to do anything, or do you? Nope. Do, okay. Yeah, take it. Thanks, Renato. Anyone back there know how to use Flater Mouse? You can take this if you want. Um, Just for like flying around. Okay. I don't know how to do that, so I will. So center. Mostly just center clicks and scrolls. Okay. Oh. You want to try it? Yeah. Uh, we'll, what's it on? MB proc, the button. I'm going to release it. Yeah, Argus is having fun in the belt thrust or whatever. Chat is a little still disagreeing. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we have that up on channel three now. It appears yep. that we've arrested here our momentum. Here's where we are, possibly. TBD. But still, it's not it's not computer right now. Yeah. All right. Was there a specific request from the audience yeah, about what they wanted to see? They were very interested in the top ridge on the seam. I'm not sure. Of you Don Quixote? Remember. Yeah, of Don Quixote. Okay. So here. center click will get you to center wherever you want to be, and then scroll to zoom in, and then left, you can move your click with your normal click and kind of drag around. It's pretty intuitive, except for the center click stuff. So this is uh, this is Don Quixote Seamount right now, right here in the frame. Uh, kind of uh, roughly north up uh, right now. North up is... Uh, Rennie, what is going on with uh, mm -hmm. Argus's tracking and high pack? Yeah, usually when we have a lot of uh, strain on the bow thruster, sometimes that whatever the frequency that is kind of okay garbles it. Got it. Um, thankfully, Argus is not doing those things. Yes, <laughs> I. Uh, I'm so you kind of have to like give a little mean average, but it's it's actually in there now. I okay. Could, um, it's it looks it's right there. Got it. Tracking along. Thank you. So, oh, so uh, I guess they're interested in in the one we are currently on. Oh, okay. So this is an unnamed seamount, just to the right. south. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So this is where we are right now. Let's see, this is where we, this is where we were the past few days. On Don Quixote Seamount, we went southwest, a small s volcano, and you can see the start and end points of today's dive. The profile. Today's dive. It's definitely um, doesn't have characteristic guillot features, but more of a sharp top seam out. Um, I, was this, this one was mapped, uh, I think previously, but we did some gap filling on this mm. uh, on the way in this morning. I don't know if that's in there yet. Oh, it might not be in the yeah. Yeah. Does anyone know what the process is like for naming seamounts like this that are unnamed? It's a, uh, I don't know the full process, but I know it involves several different organizations. Um, so there's like a global organization, but also there's a protocol within the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument that involves conversation with the cultural working group um, in terms of honoring the connection of Native Hawaiian communities to this area. So I think there would be a uh, Hawaii-based conversation to propose names, and then those would then be forwarded to an uh, international body for um, review and approval. Kalameho, is there anything else you'd like to add to that <laughs> that you know of? No, nope, that was perfect. That was just about as much as I know. Okay. Thank yeah, you. and I don't know how, I don't know the speed at which that process happens. I've never been involved in... Um, trying to get new names for new features. So that'll be something that I think is done as part of this whole expedition series. Um, uh, because also the mapping cruise that happened just before this one and then on the Luliokalani Ridge 
um, also picked out new seafloor features uh, through that multi-beam mapping. And so there'll probably be many features that uh, would be eligible to have a name added to them that would probably then be forwarded as a group. Thank you. So I, I zoomed out on the uh, litter mouse again kind of show you in context what we're going to be doing, uh, where we're going to be going overnight tonight, where we're going to be diving tomorrow. So if you follow my cursor up in the upper left-hand corner where I'm circling and where the track is drawn is the site where we are right now. And then we're going to be headed southeast to this large guillot down here, which is our next site called Tamana. Mm -hmm. And I think it actually is the shallowest feature that we yeah. will be diving on. I think you're right. So it's, it's quite large too. I think it's longer than Don Quixote. Uh, definitely shallower. So I, I'm excited. Mm. Uh, but I think uh, we'll probably be diving at similar depths so we can make sure to avoid that carbonate cap and get those um, rocks and cr thick crusts that are of interest to our science party. Yeah, and why can you explain? I know you've done this before, Beth, but what um, is the intent in avoiding carbonate caps with with rock sampling? Uh, yeah. Um, the reason we're not going to the top of the geos is that, um, you know, those features are a reflection of when those seamounts were subaerial, got eroded, came below sea level, had um, carbonates, uh, corals, all kinds of uh, carbonates formed by corals on top of them, and they can be very thick. Uh, and so they are not great areas for trying to get at the underlying rock of the seamount um, because it's going to be buried underneath that coral rubble. Um, and also for... Uh, so we wouldn't be able to accomplish some of the objectives of these expeditions by going to those flat-topped areas. Um, because the goal of this expedition is to not only identify the animals that live on these seamounts, but to understand the age and the alteration history of these seamounts. Yeah, thank you. So, so Beth, I, I threw up on your mouse control there the, the MVPROC computer, so you can move it now. So mouse three uh, or the center mouse button will help you move across the map. You just click and it'll zoom to that. Uh, and then right mouse button uh, is what rotates around. What? Uh, well, uh, no, left, sorry, left mouse button. Right mouse button draws, draws <laughs> tracks. Yeah. It's a little fast. You'll get used to it. Yep, you guys are going to have to get used to me driving. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, I think we should probably remove channel three. It looks like it's strobing pretty strongly out there. Okay, sorry. We uh, sorry. I we brought up Flater Mouse and then I just didn't do anything because I'm still trying to figure out some other technical issues up here. It's okay. I think it's it's strobing a little bit out there for viewers. So yeah, it probably doesn't help when I don't know how to drive. Um, so gonna, let's just enjoy some corals in our view of Hercules. I'm going to keep yeah, trying. Yeah, speaking of that, we um, it looks like we got our jet pump back, but the valve thruster is now being restarted. So we're okay. going to be somewhat stable uh, pretty soon. Okay. Looks like we could probably kind of take a look at some stuff while we wait. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, so there's a couple things here. We can see off to the right of our frame of you and Hercules that there's a very large whip. Yeah, I mean, that long whip. Oh, yeah, let's take a look. Um, and considering how much bottom time we have left, um, probably the thing I would prioritize before we start trying to go back up the summit is actually trying to get a rock sample. Mm. Sure. Um, so once we know that we've got a little bit of time, 
with the ship and where we're settled out, we'll do that. So we can just look around while we're waiting. Sure thing. Can we get a partial zoom on the whip out here to see if there's any significance to the sure how the end looks? It looks a little different to me, but I think that's just because we're kind of far away. Okay, um, Roger. Go looks ahead, like Jeff. we're back online, so we can start calling moves in. I, I heard back there you wanted to um, prioritize looking for rocks first, so we could get set up back upslope in our normal setup and look for rocks and move if we need to. A little purple coral there, too. Oh, yeah, there's another one of these purple corals down here. Oh, yeah. I'm not, not quite sure which one that How's is. How's that sound, Beth? Um, yes. Okay, so we're pretty much settled out right now under the ship. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct, yeah. Yeah, so we can look for one here, and then we'll start moseying up to the summit. Sure thing. Um, and get one up there, too. Okay. So if we could um, zoom back out, please. I'm going to go a little upslope from that. Yeah, we're yeah that sounds low, good. Uh, low on Argus there, I think. As far as that goes. Not terrible. Jake, when you spin around, do you want to take out that 6-8 there? Take 6-8 up. Yeah, that will yeah. be the rough direction. Let me take a look here. Yeah, roughly. That might put the same. All right. Oh, well, that was a fun little. Hey, Steve, how detour. can I get my computer detour. back? Okay, the the I'm gonna. So if you press the C H Psi computer, it should be on the left. Chief Psi, C H F Psi. Do I need pop to press right back just once? Yeah, there, there we go. go. Thank you. I was gonna uh, try the chat one more time in a minute, but you can you can do it there if you uh, right. feel inclined. You wanna come up a bit on the delta there, Jake? Yeah, I. I, it seems like the for the people in the chat, there's no problem. But getting into the chat, if you leave the chat, it's not letting us log in, or it's being exceptionally slow. Yeah, and just to clarify, that is the science chat, which is a separate channel that is open to uh, experts in this region that you can apply to join. Very different Go from the general chat. Yeah. Go ahead. There you are. Yeah, and if you're following along on YouTube, the, the chat is actually on nautiluslive.org. So Jess, just let me know when you feel like you're in an area that um, you're comfortable spending some time. Yeah, sure thing. I'm just getting a little bit upslope. Okay. Um, advises any time in case the ship does more interesting things. Yep. Um, okay, sounds good. But yeah, so actually at the top of this little lip here, we can sit down for rocks. That works out with, uh, yeah, for you. Yeah, we'll have a look, a little look around. Um, oh, that's pretty dense. Yeah, it is. A little cluster. Okay, Beth, anywhere up here, if you look in Argus Cam, is there any uh, cracks and crevices looks like coming up here? Would any of these be appropriate and suitable for you? Potentially. I am looking for something. So there's a nice um, arterial texture up here. I'm just oh trying yeah, to look for heading. something. Oh, I see. So that should be all right. I'll keep an eye on it. Rennie, are you Sorry. advising against sitting down? Nope, well, we're all good. We're okay. just looking at some ship movement, but it's just a heading change, not a okay, not a planar movement. <laughs> the view from Argus is kind of cool right now. 
Yeah, so anywhere around here, I can get a little closer so you get a better idea of what's going on. Yeah, so do you think it's possible to come around here and be looking like towards our, uh, towards the direction we are in right now? Uh, I mean, or is that going to be difficult? No, no, um, we might have enough scope on the tether. I can, uh, I can bump you over. Yeah, you want to bump us over there, yeah, Annie? let's do that. While they're doing this heading change. I'll just, I'll go 10 meters, 290. Roger. Bridge nav. Uh, step 10 meters, bearing 290. Thank you. All right, Jake, you want to come down a little bit there? Roger. Those laser lights are 10 centimeters apart. We'll make it. Nice. Going back to talking about how I guess we're about to settle. Looks like we're, uh, if this is a difficult place to sit, we can also come back around to where we were and I'll keep looking. I'm moving Argus closer, so we should be all right. Yeah. Okay. I'll, th I'll be it'll, patient. It'll just, yeah, it'll just take a second. Yeah, I'm just going to float here for a minute, but we can take a look at the landscape if you'd like. Yeah, if we could get a partial zoom in this region, that sure. would be helpful to me. Sure thing. Um, maybe... Yeah, maybe try 12 off the, the delta there. Um, if we start getting yanked around, then we'll come wide of it. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, Jeff. Yeah, there's some really interesting pieces in here. I'm curious if they will be loose. Okay, thank you. Okay, pull it. Um, and while we're sitting here, we can maybe go ahead and look at this coral off to our right. If we have the maneuverability to do so. Sure thing. It's Great. definitely something we've seen before, but it doesn't hurt to... Yeah, Get no, some it's, good got, tree. it's got polyps closed. Um, so great it should shot. be easy to do. Yeah, the Argus shot's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. At the very least, a genus, maybe I'm species hold off there, but there, Jeff, please. It's a very Cormanic Argus shot. Yeah. Yeah, say? can we get a still of the Argus shot, please? Yes. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Looks like uh, Argus is getting a little closer there. Roger. Any more? Zoom. Hmm. I can go a little closer if you want, Argus. Oh. That is interesting, actually. Looks like it's got some little feathery crinoids on it as well. You can actually see some of the spines on the polyp, uh, which is indicative. Uh, and one of the diagnostic characteristics we can use. I have a suspicion, but let me check it and get back to you on the okay. ID for this per node. Can you come a little wide there, please? Thanks. You want another zoom on that, or should we just sit no, down was, for the rest? That was beautiful, thank you. All right. 
Oh, you with Argus positioning, you're good there. Roger that. Ooh, we should totally frame up that shot for Argus, too. Yeah. Cool. So I missed it. Are we we're going to go for one of these rocks? Yes, uh, we are. Okay. Anything in this vicinity look all right for you? And if so, I can keep my parking position here. Yeah, yeah, I think this parking position is good. The ones I was looking at were kind of up here. I'm not sure if they're going to be loose enough. But um, so, for instance, this one right here is one that I'm attracted to. All right, go ahead and push on in there a bit there, Jeff. It's, a cool it's attached, but I th it looks like it might be breakable. Oh, and there's some little... Well, Pink guy right in, on top in front of him. Can we have a closer zoom on that? It's like a squat lobster. Oh. Isn't that pull cute? right here. Yeah, so I'd like to target this rock, but if it won't come out, then the one that the squat lobster is on is another good target. Roger that. Come full wide there, please. And for sanity's sake, are we zoomed in on Argus there, or? Nope. Roger. So if great. you want, you can frame up that shot. Yeah, it's Keep a great shot. Sonar. All the coral all around. Yeah, if you want to zoom in, Jeff, on Argus, you can. Nice. Very cool. Awesome Very shot. Cool. So we're talking about that Oops. part. Are you on SPL, Jeff? I'm push no, on and on hurt there, please. I was just saying I love the shot on That's great, thank you. Argus when the arm is actually working. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. Perspective you don't you don't get with the one see. body. Yeah. yeah. So Jess, before we try that small one, okay. the one just below it, if we could try that one first because it's a little bit bigger this big guy not it, it's just this piece i think will <laughs> maybe break off when we were looking at it before it looked like it had a fracture on the back side okay if it doesn't then the one that you were going for would be my next favorite candidate let's try that again and if we can break off a piece of this that would be a lotto ticket day. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at that. Lotto ticket for all of us. It's just my luck again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It Thank just you, Jake. keeps going. <laughs> um, all right, looks like only see launches with Jake. Swoops in to <laughs> take credit. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, Jake. It's falling apart. Jake. It's so friable, it's breaking before we can even get it in the box. All right. Well, we can get a good, better zoom on this guy. Yeah. Do you want to put it in the box or do you want to get photos? I, um. Yeah, let's take a couple quick zooms, okay. um, uh, close-up shots, and then we'll put it in the forward bio box. All right, go ahead and push on in there, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, really altered. That's great. So is this like the best case scenario for a rock pickup? Like that you really want to crack it off that the bottom there? Um, it's just a different type. So okay. we've gotten all kinds on this expedition, some that are... Uh, nice and the manganese crust is really smooth. This one has a kind of botryoidal texture, um, b both on the top and the bottom. So that'll be an interesting comparison. Great. Those yeah. are great shots. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, no worries. Full wide, please. I'm gonna do DVL reset on the fly. We're driving away into nothingness. Roger. All right, Jake. Uh, what, what box are we doing there? We're gonna do forward box, correct? Yeah, yep. forward either side. Forward either side, Raj. You want to go ahead and pop it up? Yep. Oh, oh. oh. What's gonna, that? Jake, your your <laughs> luck may just be keep on going. I think the science portal is finally working for me. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll take credit for that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My goodness. Just pushed us off a little bit. That's okay. With any luck, we'll stay on. How about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I, I think it may have been a SAT issue because I'm I'm noticing some slow loading going on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, rock. 
And Jess, that piece that broke off, you think you can pick that up too and add it to the box? This guy here, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We can just put it in the same compartment. Steve, what's the sample number on this thing? This is going to be 106. Ooh, we broke hundo. Okay, now we'll need to zoom, I suppose. Okay, that's good there, Jeff. But I could do it from afar. For those at home, you can see that the view from Argus is heaving up and down, which is matching some swell motion we're feeling up here in the van. It's been relatively flat and calm, but the winds have definitely started picking up again. The swells have still been here with us the whole time. Go ahead and push it on this guy here. Great. Thank you. And for my, uh, Steve, for my intent, this is the same sample. I'm going to treat it as one thing. Copy that. Yeah, that's nice. Really great. Great. Nice and we'll, once we get this stowed in the box, I'd also oh, like to get a uh, Niskin sample, please. Yeah, you do. Let's do it. All right, Jake, go ahead and pop it out. Lots of cheering for ROV team. That was a fun, it was fun to watch from Argus. Very popular. Yeah, great. Oh, oh a little sticky. Oh, that sticky manganese rock. crust is... Oh, <laughs> oh I'm just passing <laughs> it like to and from now. Magic trick. Yeah. Like a hot <laughs> potato. That was great. Couldn't follow it for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> Which cup is it under? <laughs> which um, which Niskins are open? We have six, five, four, or two. Okay. For six, five, four, two. Roger that. Yeah, that's our lotto ticket number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what we'll do. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the is the porch light on there? I believe it is on. Yeah, it's on. Oh, it's just darker. Oh, the we magic got an, of video. An eel visiting, I believe, too. I can see an Argus. Do that. Oh, yeah. oh, it's behind Hercules now. Hopefully he's not near the Niskin bottle. Otherwise, he's going to have a bad day. <laughs> we'll have a biological sample. That would sample. be exceptionally lucky. <laughs> hey, guys, got eyes what on the fish. Niskin, sir? Another yep. Niskin bottle. Do I have the Niskin here? I'm gonna come up a little bit on the delta there, Jake. Okay, fire sure. six now. Six gone. Yep, six, six is closed. <coughs> We've done um, this Steve, mm -hmm. we might want to note in the log about the fish being nearby when that sample was taken for uh, Meredith's purposes. Copy that. <laughs> so we got thrusted. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brenny, I think you were off for that, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. We, uh, I think we're done at this spot. Um, so, Rennie, if we could put in a ship's move to bring us back up towards that summit, and let's boogie up that way. Sure. I'll head towards the Bathy Alcyon and Victor Gorgias site. Yes. It's, bro it's on our way. Roger that. Three two zero will be the bearing. Three two zero. Bridge nav. Uh, step one hundred meters, bearing three two zero. Jeff, do you mind bringing yep. up high pack on channel three? Can zoom out a bit here if that's what you like. Beth. Yeah, it's fine. What what you have now is great. Okay, good. So just for our audience at home, you can see that our we had been coming up towards the top of the summit, and then we had some technical difficulties um, with the, oh, looks like the fish is still hanging out with us. Um, 
And so we had to come back down slope so you can see that blue line uh, of Hurricane Argus following the ship. Now that those issues are squared away, we um, are going to head back up towards that summit where it says end on high pack. Thanks, Jeff. Really a lot of excitement actually tonight about that rock sample, Beth. And somebody observed when you were unloading samples from a I previous dive so. in the lab, they saw a rock saw. And they're wondering if you've already had a chance to cut through any of the rocks, if there's been any observations or surprises thus far. Um, we haven't used the saw, actually, to break open any rocks. We um, have used just a chisel and a hammer to break them open on natural fractures. Um, so we've done that for several rocks, maybe like a fifth of the rocks that we've collected. Um, and yeah, so we do have some idea of what these rocks look like on the inside. Some of them have relatively thick crust, some of them have thin crust, some of them are hard on the inside, some of them are soft on the inside. So we've got a, a range of material that we've collected. Do you ever find uh, types of fossils like microfossils in your rock sample? I have not observed any microfossils. Are, is the audience members maybe referring to the fact that uh, when manganese nodules form in, on abyssal plains, they often have um, like shark's teeth or all kinds of weird fossil type material as the precipitating agent that the crust forms around. Here, um, that's probably more rare. Uh, here, the precipitating agent for the crust is actually the rocks themselves. Um, so usually there's a, uh, a either highly altered or moderately altered basalt on the inside of the crust. Cool, thank you. Come on, you can do it. Oh, looks like we have a little shrimp going by the uh, push cores. Woohoo! All right, chat is open. So exciting. That little sponge down there on the right looks like PVC pipes. Yeah, that was one that we were observing earlier in the dive. Looks like there's a fish down in that little crevice. Sorry, did you guys want to look at the, the fish? or? Was I was just pointing out we don't necessarily need to get a zoom on it, I don't think. Roger. Um, yeah, I think our objective here is just to keep going back up towards the summit. So, Roger, Roger that. Yeah, the uh, the move I have been actually will put Argus in range of that Bathy Alcyon if if we want to spend time at it or just go blast past it to the. Okay, summit. I'll let Steve tell me if he wants pictures of anything in particular. Yeah, they Oops. just cruise up there. Yeah, make up some time. Roger. Yeah, so we've got maybe another, a little less than an hour of bottom time left on this dive, uh, H1881. And uh, then we'll be heading back up with all these precious samples. So very large. I think it's a bamboo coral. Wow, yeah. big fan. Do a partial oh. zoom in there? Yeah, partial, oh. partial on the flyby. Yeah. It's nice. Thanks, Amber. Jeff. Probably uh, another. Well, let's see. Uh, you want to get a slightly closer zoom so no, you can I think identify? I, I can see. see from here. Maybe. Yeah, if we don't have to sit down, but if we can go full zoom just so we can see where it's branching. Okay, so it's branching on the inter, 
It looks hard. It's on the nose. On the nose. Yeah. Both. 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 Yeah. Huh? It's tough sometimes. It's really close to the nose. Yeah, that's. It's Can you come a little wide there, please, Jeff. It's tough sometimes when they get um, very calcified. They can actually overgrow their own nodes, mm. so they. Uh, I hate when that happens. Yeah, it tends to make identification a little bit more difficult. But I think these are still the same J clade. Uh, okay. Bamboos that we've been seeing. What's Thanks, the Jess. Orange associate there on the bottom. Sure thing. Oh, is that a is that picnic a picnic That would be cool. Which I'm yeah. a little more stable. You want to do a snap in there? Yeah. Is it a picnic goat? That's his picnic goat like there. Yeah. Big one. It was to the. Yeah, it was over to the right. the right. Yeah. And so it looks like the branches are rising from the nodes. There it is. There. All right. Oh, oh yeah. I please. They got it. Big yeah. one. Those are Big known puppy. coral predators, so that could be some predation action. Another really long, long whip. Yeah. So I, I think. Um, J clade actually uh, is called J clade not because it's has anything to do with just the number of the letter of the alphabet, but uh, I think it's based on the genus Jason Isis, yeah. which was uh, described not not too long ago, mm -hmm. um, originally from like Australia, Tasmania area was the original description, but it's since been found all over the world, Atlantic, Pacific. Yeah, Renny, can I ask a Point of clarification. Sure. I'm um, realizing that maybe we want to go back to that spot where we put the uh, uh, Bathy Alcyon mm -hmm. Victor Gorgia um, spot. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to go back to that and have a closer look, because we had to leave. Oh, uh, yeah. We're actually headed right there. Yeah, great. I just wanted to double check. Yeah. I had said the summit, but. Hopefully, we'll be able to relocate it. it yeah, find that little like spot our again. Positioning's pretty good, so. Since we're on, uh, well, no, we're kind of on a similar trajectory that we came up the first time. Yeah. I'm curious if we hit that 1780 meter ISA bath, if we'll start to just see this, um, these yellow plexorids pop out again, because I haven't seen them since we dropped back down. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a pretty hard uh, depth for them to cross. It could just also be that this is not their preferable substrate type. They seem to like boulders, whereas here it's more sediment with, I guess, broken sheets, maybe? Or how would you characterize this? Uh, yeah, this is kind of like a ropey flow. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, with a lot of sediment on top. There's a relatively large shrimp in the lower left corner of the screen. <laughs> Slowly making it back. That was a fun little detour. We had a similar uh, unplanned detour like that on Ocean Networks Canada, mm. and uh, we were at the hydrothermal vent sites. And Dan and I just made the best of it. We were like, "Well, let's just go vent hopping." <laughs> and so we <laughs> sat down on every one, and we'd look at it until we had to pull off and then go to the next one, <laughs> well. zoom in on a vent. It happened to work out. I mean, it's like magical that we fell off in the exact path of a lot of active vents. 
That's very fortunate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we paid for that luck. You paid for what? We paid for that luck. <laughs> you paid for that luck. Jess, can you pivot left just briefly? Yeah, sure thing. Anything in particular you want to see? I wanted to look at the sediment off to our left. Oh. Looked like there was a um like a little ledge in it. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Can we get a partial zoom? Oh no, it's not a ledge, it's just a broken sponge. Never mind. Okay, we're good. You can go back to the heading you had. Okay. I was like, is that a carbonate ledge? What is that? No. It's just shadows. Ah. Uh, that's a whole lot of light making weird shadows. Shadows in the deep. What do we think we'll find here at the top? We were getting, seeming we were getting different. Yeah, we were getting a couple small, you know, um, couple small uh, examples of species we hadn't previously seen. So maybe we'll see a couple more of those. Who knows? We have a viewer who was there during those vent dives. Oh, Nada. nice. Hmm. So the detours allowed for some pretty awesome footage. Yeah. Yeah, really cool shots. Really like tight zooms into the vent fluid and fauna. And then the vehicle's detached from the ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shortly thereafter. <laughs> great luck followed by not so great luck. <laughs> well, then we got them back, though. It's true. It's all that counts. Steve, we've got a viewer from New York wondering what kinds of crabs or crustaceans might we expect to see or are common in this area. We've seen... What was the, the, the second part of that question? What... What kinds of crustaceans might we expect to see in this area? Um, we've definitely seen a number of squat lobsters for sure. Uh, so squat lobsters, um, seen some shrimp. Typically, uh, are associated. Shrimp are also also associated. Uh, tripping over my words. Associated. Also associated. Yes, that's <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty of sleep. I swear. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're associated with uh, everything from there corals might be to one sponges. Right there. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So they uh, they'll often use these uh, structures to get up off the bottom. Go do a partial there, Jeff. A little bit higher in the flow. Oh no, that's a brittle star. Oh yeah, no. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Rhinoid. Rhinoid. Just kidding. There's a shrimp in the background. Though. Yeah, there is a shrimp in the background. Ah, yes, to prove her point. Yep. <laughs> the one in the background is probably a nematocarcinus shrimp. They have long legs, like they're walking on stilts. Um, what else will we see? If you were to look very closely at um, some of these corals and sponges, you might see amphipods um, buzzing around. These are tiny little plankton, although you typically find them in higher density. Yeah, there you can see some shrimp or some small amphipods. Um, they kind of blend in with the marine snow a bit, but they're uh, yeah free, free living. Yep. yep. There you go, amphipods. Thanks, Jess. On and Jeff. Yeah, sure thing. Walteria is uh, that that sponge we were just looking at is called Walteria, and um, sometimes we find uh, these really cool benthic tenophores associated with them. They will latch on and extend their tentacles like fishing lures off the um, off of the sponge into the water column and uh, basically fish effectively hmm. or particulate matter. Steve, maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't I don't think we've seen a lot of tunicates. Mm -mm. Yeah, I know. It's been pretty uh, zooplankton poor. Um, obviously, there's not as much um, you know, mass of marine snow in the water column, but um, I have seen from time to time some, some tenophores uh, sometimes siphonophores float by, uh, hydromedusae, but you're right, they're not in as great of a density as we typically saw on the west coast. Not a lot of the sessile ones. 
Yeah, and there there are some sessile forms. Yeah, and those are what I expect to see um, on things like sponges and corals. But typically, Walteria more than others. Maybe it's just because the Walteria has these very thin branches uh, or spicules that come out of the colony that uh, just maybe favorable for them to settle. Here's another one of the Walteria with a crinoid on top. Yeah, just begging to be imaged, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and push it a little tighter. Yeah, there's a lot of things attached to this one. It's great. It's like playing dress up as a sunflower. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. It wants to be in the school play. <laughs> so I think there are some brittle stars in here. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Jess. Chaffing. Oh, crinoids. Or feather feather stars. The feather stars are the ones that are kind of look like this, but the sea sea lilies are the ones that look like uh uh the stalked version. Mm. They're on the very end of a stalk. So we're approaching the area where we observed two new new to us coral observations. So hopefully we can find that spot again. The ship is settling out. Argus has a bit to go. Hopefully we'll still have enough leash to get to that. About the Alcyon. So I'm just additionally, <laughs> to follow up on the crustacean question, sometimes we see things like barnacles too mm -hmm. are associated with attaching to bare skeleton in parts of these coral colonies or sponges. So they, it, they're, um, yeah, there's a pretty good diversity and different types of feeding modes. Uh, you find for stations and coral and sponge habitat. Thanks, Steve. There's also a purple coral colony here. So just oh, like oh yeah, can we get a partial zoom on that, please? That yeah, portrait? stand by one there, sec. Get a bit better. Nice. Oh, I think this is. We also see those uh, octocorals off to the oh, left. Nice. So oh, yeah. two cool things we can look at here. Yeah, they travel in. They travel this one together. on the right hand side looks like one of the full full sized, with quotes. All right, go uh, ahead, Jeff. Victor Gorgia. Victor Gorgia colonies, yeah. There we go. Brilliant color. Beautiful. Yep. That's some yeah, really, really nice associates. They've got a little baby at the bottom. Uh, one of these brittle stars, snake stars. As well as some shrimp at the bottom. Sometimes you see you see um, other critters like uh, Aplacophorans will, will prey on these, and uh, you'll typically find them wrapped around the base or somewhere up in the colony. Mm -hmm. uh, these small are bump up. Uh, shellless mollusks. But very really pretty. Nice. Very really good. Very cool. Very, very photogenic colony. Thank you. Yeah. Good captures. Go ahead and come wide. Do you want the red ones too? Yeah, can we pivot and look at these right here? Yeah, sure thing. Get a little more light on them. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Now we can kind of do a twofer here. Now this is interesting. Um, so we've got, you know, something that looks like anthemastis uh, in the center, but we've got all these single polyp ones, and I didn't see any. Um, of these multi-polyp mushroom corals in the other cluster we saw. Mm -hmm. So it could conceivably be that uh, because we didn't see them that it might not be uh, Bathyalcyon but just young anthemastis. But uh, yeah, it's good to get this observation because it lends some um, additional data 
for us to consider doing our IDs. And, uh, okay. So, yeah. Thanks. All right. Great point. But that would just mean they're younger. And is there anything else we want to image while we're over here, Steve? Um, I, we we can continue on. Okay. There, yeah. There's there's a couple of um, other yellow fans we've been seeing, but mm -hmm. um, you know, we can just look, zoom on those opportunistically. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit in front, but I guess we're we're stopped anyway. So whatever swing we have, we have. So if we see one along the way, we can. Did you want to stop at those now that we saw those two there? Did you want to go back to that site or kind of boogie to the top? We're starting to, around 9.45, we should really start to uh, set up and pull up just in case oh, we lose a bit. Stuff. What was the question? Oh, those, uh, no, I was just wondering what those pink things were. I think they're anemones, though. Oh. They're covering that one branch. Yeah, there's yeah. some up there, too. Wow. Did That's you want to look at that? or No, no, no. I was nope. just making a, audio notes. Um, yeah, Rennie, to come back to your question, uh, I think that's something I want to confer with Steve about whether we want to try to find that spot we were at, at the when we first saw the purple and pink uh, to decide if we want to take any kind of sample. What's the DC ground fault uh, there? Uh, or if we should oh. just keep going to the summit. That, that we saw them, um, you know, just now, I think we can yeah. continue on. It's on okay. Rick. Yeah. It's on okay. Rick. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, if, if we didn't see any of these other anthemasses, I would say, you know, maybe that would be kind of a unique observation, but now that we're seeing more of them, yeah. I suspect they're probably not uh, Bathyalcyon was suspected, but they're probably uh, yeah, Doppler out. just you very young anthemastus, but that is still a very curious observation. Okay. That, uh, so then, Rennie, I think the answer to your question is let's put in some more ship's moves to get us up to the summit. Roger that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to reach the summit. We've come this far, right? <laughs> We've come so close. Just a few uh, meters step away. Step 100 meters, bearing 330. Try USB alert seeking Mezzo. Those are the usual culprits. Interesting that it just showed, though. Yeah. It's popped up. Five oh two is okay, but oh no, don't be the USB. <laughs> no. USB. Oh no. Come on, we just fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> I use the term "we" very lightly. Uh, your Doppler's back on, so I'm gonna do a reset. And Doppler's back on, yeah. There you go. Might have a few moments here before the Argus starts move, movement again. Roger. All right, so we're back at our colony of interest from 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago. Nice, right on target. Oh, yeah, we are. Look at that. I, was, I thought it was deja vu for a second. But Subsea mm -hmm. navigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Works. It was like there's so many cool corals I like here. I've seen this before. <laughs> Did you still want to Im image this while we're sitting here? or? Uh, if, if we could take a, just a quick zoom back in. Uh, yeah. Just to see yeah, if we time. missed something last time, if there are any of these other anthemastis uh, around that would kind of put a pin in it. Roger. Can you want to do a stick lock for me, please? Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Do you want to focus on the purple or the pink? Um, actually, uh, kind of at six o'clock, I see something else. Uh, it's kind this? of a white, yeah, gelatinous thing. A sponge yeah. looking we thing. Take a look at that quickly first, and then we'll zoom up to the the red. Um, yeah. The red, the, the purple, so we can we've got good imagery of already. Oh, okay, weird. it's a, just a very young Walteria. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, young Walter. Yeah, I've never seen one that small, but that's pretty cool. Um. It's got a brittle a star at the base of it. Snap of that, yep. All right, now we can shoot up to those red um, Roger. mushroom corals. Drake, you want to keep on ground fault hunting? Go ahead and push on in there again, please. What else is DC? 